Hello students, welcome to the lecture on corporate risk management and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the corporate risk management, discuss the risk approaches, define the economic value and book value, define the types of risk managing firms. Let's start with a brief introduction. Corporate risk management works to ensure the safety of the people and assets of organization, guarding them from risk of injury or financial loss. The Corporate Risk Management Office manages the various insurance programs for the organization including property insurance, general liability insurance and automobile insurance. As part of the overall goal to safeguard the resources of the organization, Corporate Risk Management also works in partnership with Corporate Police. Enterprise Risk Management ERM, provides a framework to understand and respond to business uncertainties and opportunities with relevant risk insight delivered through common, integrated risk identification, analysis and management disciplines. The ERM enhances organizational resiliency by improving decision making, strengthening governance and supporting a risk intelligent culture. Corporate risk management emerged as a name for practices that serve to optimize risk taking in a context where both book value accounting and market value accounting are relevant but neither is entirely sufficient. An example would be a utility that owns power plants suitably valued using book value accounting that generate electricity sold on the spot market where market value accounting is more applicable. This is Leslie. She is a chief risk officer for a large bank. She finds her job is becoming more and more difficult. Because of globalization, Leslie's business contacts come from different cultures speak different languages and follow different customs. Technology results in growing speed of communication and increasing amounts of information are transmitted in less time. So a larger number of people are involved but cannot spend enough time on the information received. Events and geographies are highly interdependent, which means problems can expand into other geographies faster than can be understood and outcomes are highly unpredictable. These three factors are examples of changes that have made the business world a complex, multi-layered network and the job of a risk manager increasingly challenging. But stop! Things can be different. This is Pat. She's a CRO for a large bank. Pat knows that people in risk management face an ever-increasing number of rules to follow. But this does not help. Pat's approach is different. She is mainly concerned with how to recognize an emerging risk issue and wants to understand it quickly to keep it from rapidly becoming bigger. To achieve this, Pat knows that there must be useful communication to carefully select information and those that it's addressed to provide better information relative to the role of the people and simplify the information at hand. She also wants to improve the cooperation between all involved. The relationship manager is only one of many players involved in assessing the risk of a client or a transaction. Everyone needs to actively participate in the process, encourage the asking of questions and accept mistakes as a learning experience. Let's be realistic, risk managers who rely on working through the rule books are only likely to react once the horse has bolted. The rule books can never be complete and up to date and will often slow you down. However, if you engage your people and encourage them to think creatively, you will build a network of people who will be forward looking and able to recognize emerging risk faster and act. Don't work on your own, ask questions and make it simple. It works. Let us now study next topic. Corporate risk management is a process affected by an entity's board of directors, management and other personnel applied in strategy setting and across the enterprise designed 
to identify potential events that may affect the entity and manage risk to be within its risk appetite to provide a reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of entity objectives. The definition reflects certain fundamental concepts. Corporate risk management is a process ongoing and flowing through an entity, effected by people at every level of organization, applied in strategy setting, applied across the enterprise at every level and unit and includes taking an entity level portfolio view of risk. Designed to identify potential events that if they occur will affect the entity and to manage risk within its risk appetite. Able to provide reasonable assurance to an entity's management and board of directors. Geared to achievement of objectives in one or more separate but overlapping categories. This definition is purposefully broad. It captures key concepts fundamental to how companies and other organizations manage risk, provide a basis for application across organizations, industries and sectors. It focuses directly on achievement of objectives established by a particular entity and provides a basis for defining enterprise risk management effectiveness. Enterprise risk management consists of eight interrelated components. These are derived from the way management runs an enterprise and integrated within the management process. These components are internal environment. The internal environment encompasses the tone of an organization and sets the basis for, of how risk viewed and addressed by an entity's people, including risk management philosophy and risk appetite, integrity and ethical values, and the environment in which they operate. Objective setting. Objectives must exist before management can identify potential events affecting their achievement. Enterprise risk management ensures that management has in place a process to set objectives and that the chosen objectives support and align with the entity's mission and are consistent with its risk appetite. Event identification. Internal and external events affecting achievement of an entity's objectives must be identified, distinguishing between risks and opportunities. Opportunities are channeled back to management's strategy or objective setting processes. Risk assessment. Risks are analyzed considering likelihood and impact as a basis for determining how they should be managed. Risks are accessed on an inherent and a residual basis. Risk assessment simply means looking at each specific task and considering what is the safest way to complete it. This helps us become aware of the hazards involved in doing the job and taking action to prevent injury. As a building or construction worker, you are obliged to ensure you only carry out construction work you are competent to do, report significant risks, Cooperate with others and coordinate work to ensure the health and safety of you and your co-workers. Ensure you notify a supervisor of accidents and near misses. And follow site health and safety rules and procedures. The aim is to develop a safety culture, communicating methods of work and ensuring everyone knows how to work safely every day. Before starting a task, it is essential to think of what is the safest and best way to do it. Documenting this helps in assessing the risks. There are five steps to completing a risk assessment. Document the activity. Assemble those involved in the activity and write down the tasks step by step. Identify the significant hazards. Next to each task, identify what part may cause injury to those doing the work or to anyone else nearby. Document the control measures. For each identified hazard, list the measures that need to be put in place to eliminate or minimize any likely risk of injury to those involved. Identify who is responsible. Document the name of the person responsible for implementing the control measure. And finally, monitor and review. 
make sure the activity is supervised to ensure the documented process is being followed. The documentation should be reviewed whenever an activity changes, when there is a change of personnel or after an appropriate length of time. This documentation provides a written record of the procedures to be used on a task. As it is a record that can be used in court, it should be signed off by the parties who have responsibility for the tasks. When risks are identified, control measures can be implemented and followed. These measures are known as the hierarchy of hazard controls. You must address each hazard with a solution from the hierarchy in the following order. Firstly, elimination, substitution, isolation, engineering controls, administrative controls and personal protective equipment. Always address the hazard from the top down until the risk is eliminated or controlled. These control measures are often used in combination with each other. A hazard is something which, in context, has the potential to cause harm. A useful way to categorize hazards is to identify them as physical, chemical, electrical and biological. Then look at each work area to see if any of these apply. A more direct way to consider hazards is to look for scenarios that might occur. Some common construction related hazards are falling from heights, trapped by something collapsing or overturning, and being struck by a vehicle. These hazardous situations are likely to cause sudden and acute injuries. There are other hazards that may cause chronic long-term harm that must also be identified, such as contact with harmful substances, dust and fumes, exposure to noise and vibration from handheld tools. However hazards are identified, it is almost certain that for any one activity there will be many hazards. Each one has to be risk rated as each will need to be covered by the range of control measures adopted. When you are risk assessing, you need to record your findings in a systematic way showing a proper check has been made of the inherent hazards and the risk rating for each. You must also factor in other activities that are carried out concurrently. These other activities might create hazards or make the risk of some greater. In a full assessment, these other activities must be taken into account. While companies might issue guidelines for common activities, you must also conduct site-specific hazard identification. Risk Response Management selects risk responses avoiding accepting, reducing or sharing risk, developing a set of actions to align risks with entities, risk tolerances and risk appetite. Control activities and policies and procedures are established and implemented to help ensure the risk responses are effectively carried out. Information and Communication Relevant information is identified, captured and communicated in a form and time frame that enable people to carry out their responsibilities. Effective communication also occurs in a broader sense, flowing down across and up to the entity. Monitoring. The entirety of enterprise risk management is monitored and modifications are made as necessary. Monitoring is accomplished through ongoing management activities, separate evaluations or both. The risk management steps are establishing goals and context, that is the risk environment. The purpose of this stage of planning enables to understand the environment in which the respective organization operates, that means to thoroughly understand the external environment and the internal culture of the organization. Identifying risks, using the information gained from the context, particularly as categorized by the SWOT and PEST frameworks, the next step is to identify the risks that are likely to affect the achievement of the goals of the organization, activity or initiative. It should be underlined that a risk can be opportunity or strength that has not been realized. Analyzing the identified risks. Risk analysis involves the consideration of the source of risk, the consequence and likelihood to estimate the inherent or unprotected risk without controls in place. 
It also involves identification of the controls and estimation of their effectiveness and the resultant level of risk with controls in place protected, the residual or controlled risk. Qualitative, semi-quantitative and quantitative techniques are all acceptable analysis techniques depending on the risk, the purpose of the analysis and the information and data available. Accessing or evaluating the risks. Once the risks have been analyzed, they can be compared against the documented and approved tolerable risk criteria. When using risk matrices, this tolerable risk is generally documented with a risk matrix. Should the protected risk be greater than the tolerable risk, then the specific risk needs additional control measures or improvements in the effectiveness of the existing controls. Treating or managing the risks. An unacceptable risk requires treatment. The objective of this stage of the risk assessment process is to develop cost-effective options for treating the risks. Treatment options which are not necessarily Sorry. mutually exclusive or appropriate in all circumstances are driven by outcomes that include avoiding the risk, reducing mitigating the risk, transferring sharing the risk, retaining accepting the risk, avoiding the risk not undertaking the activity that is likely to trigger the risk. Reducing the risk, controlling the likelihood of the risk occurring or controlling the impact of the consequences if the risk occurs. Transferring the risk totally or in part. This strategy may be achievable through moving their responsibility to another party or sharing the risk through a contract, insurance or partnership, joint venture. However, one should be aware that a new risk arises in that the party to whom the risk is transferred may not adequately manage the risk. Retaining the risk and managing it. Resource requirements features heavily in this strategy. The next step is to determine the target level of risk resulting from the success fulfillmentation of the preferred treatments and current control activities. The intention of a risk treatment is to reduce the expected level of an unacceptable risk. Using the risk matrix, one can determine the consequence and likelihood of the risk and identify the expected target risk level. Monitoring and reviewing the risks and the risk environment regularly. It is important to understand that the concept of risk is dynamic and needs periodic and formal review. The currency of identifying risks needs to be regularly monitored. New risks and their impact on the organization may be taken into account. This step requires the description of how the outcomes of the treatment will be measured. Milestones or benchmarks for success and warning signs for failure need to be identified. The review period is determined by the operating environment including legislation but as a general rule a comprehensive review every five years is an accepted industry norm. This is on the basis that all plant changes are subject to an appropriate change process including risk assessment. The review needs to validate that the risk management process and the documentation is still valid. The review also needs to consider the current regulatory environment and industry practices which may have changed significantly in the intervening period. The organization competencies and effectiveness of the safety management system should also be covered. The plant management systems should have captured these changes and the review should be seen as a backstop. The assumptions made in the risk assessment, hazards, likelihood and consequence, the effectiveness of controls and the associated management system as well as people need to be monitored on an ongoing basis to ensure risk are in fact controlled to the underlying criteria. For an efficient risk control, the analysis of risk interactions is necessary. Continuously communicating, consulting with stakeholders and reporting. Clear communication is essential for the risk management process, that is, Clear communication of the objectives, the risk management process and its elements as well as the findings and require actions as a result of the output. Risk management is an integral element of organization's management. 
However, for its successful adoption, it is important that initial stages the reporting on risk management is visible through the framework. The requirements on the reporting have to be fixed in a qualified and documented procedure. Economic value. Techniques of the first form focus on a concept called economic value. If a market value exists for an asset, then that market value is the asset's economic value. If a market value does not exist, then economic value is the intrinsic value of the asset, what the market value of the asset would be if it had a market value. Economic values can be assigned in two ways. One is to start with accounting metrics of value and make suitable adjustments so they are more reflective of some intrinsic value. This is the approach employed with economic value added EVA analysis. The other approach is to construct some model to predict what value the asset might command if a liquid market existed for it. In this respect, unflattering name for economic value is mark to model value. Once some means has been established for assigning economic values, these are treated like market values. Standard techniques of financial risk management such as value at risk or economic capital allocation are then applied. In this context, it is not enough to assign economic values. Value at risk analysis requires standard deviations and correlations as well. Assigning these to 50-year forward prices that are themselves hypothetical is essentially meaningless, yet those standard deviations or correlations determine the reported value at risk. Such practices got out of hand in the U.S. energy markets during the late 1990s and early. The most publicized case was Enron Corp which went beyond using economic values for internal reporting and incorporated them into its financial reporting to investors. The 2001 bankruptcy of Enron and subsequent revelations of fraud-tainted mark-to-model techniques. Book value. The second approach to addressing business risk start by defining risk that is meaningful in the context of book value accounting. Most typical of these are earnings risk, which is risk due to uncertainty in future reporting earnings, cash flow risk, which is risk due to uncertainty in future reported cash flows. Of the two earnings, risk is more akin to market risk, yet it avoids the sometimes arbitrary assumptions of economic valuations. A firm's accounting earnings are a well-defined notion. A problem with looking at earnings risk is that earnings are, well, non-economic. Earnings may be suggestive of economic value but they can be misleading and are often easy to manipulate. A firm can report high earnings while its long-term franchise is eroded by lack of investment or the emergence of competing technologies. Financial transactions can boost short-term earnings at the expense of long-term earnings. One decision that needs to be made with EAR or CFAR is whether to use a constant or contracting horizon. If management wants an EAR analysis for quarterly earnings, should the analysis actually access risk to the current quarter's earnings? If that is the case, the horizon will start at three months on the first day of the quarter and gradually shrink to zero by the end of the quarter. The alternative is to use a constant three-month horizon. After the first day of the quarter, results will no longer apply to that quarter's actual earnings, but to some hypothetical earnings over a shifting three-month horizon. Both approaches are used. The advantage of a contracting horizon is that it addresses an actual concern of management. Will we hit our earnings? Target this quarter. A disadvantage is that the risk metric keeps changing. If reported, EAR declines over a week. Does this mean that actual risk has declined or does it simply reflect a shortened horizon? While the two approaches to business risk management that based on economic value and that based on book value are philosophically different, they can complement each other. Some firms use them side by side to access different aspects of business risk. Types of risk managing firms. 
corporate risk management emerged as a name for practices that serve to optimize risk taking in a context where both book value accounting and market value accounting are relevant, but neither is entirely sufficient. An example would be a utility that owns power plants suitably valued using book value accounting that generate electricity sold on the spot market, where market value accounting is more applicable. Financial risks came to be divided into three categories. Market risk. Market risk is exposure to uncertain market prices. It can only exist where assets or liabilities can be marked to market. Risk related to assets or liabilities that cannot be marked to market such as a factory or an entire business line is called business risk. Credit risk. Credit risk is risk due to uncertainty in a counterparty's also called an obligor's or credit's ability to meet its financial obligations. Because there are many types of counterparties from individuals to sovereign governments and many different types of obligations from auto loans to derivatives transactions credit risk takes many forms. Institutions manage it in different ways. In accessing credit risk from a single counterparty, an institution must consider three issues. Default probability. What is the likelihood that the counterparty will default on its obligation either over the life of the obligation or over some specified horizon such as a year? Calculated for one year horizon, this may be called the expected default frequency. Credit exposure. In the event of a default, how large will the outstanding obligation be when the default occurs? Recovery rate. In the event of a default, what fraction of the exposure may be the operational risk? It is the risk of loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes, people and systems or from external events. Operational risk is defined as the risk of loss resulting from inadequate or failed internal processes, people and systems or from external events. Most operational risks are best managed within the departments in which they arise. Information technology professionals are best suited for addressing systems related risks. Back office staffs are best suited to address settlement risks, etc. However, overall planning, coordination and monitoring should be provided by a centralized operational risk management department. Operational risk management should combine both qualitative and quantitative techniques for accessing risks. For example, settlement errors in a trading operations back office happen with sufficient regularity that they can be modeled statistically. Other contingencies affect financial institutions infrequently and are a non-uniform nature, which makes modeling difficult. Examples include acts of terrorism, natural disasters and trader fraud. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. Corporate risk management works to ensure the safety of the people and assets of organization, guarding them from the risk of injury or financial loss. Risk management strategy is an integrated business process that incorporates all of the risk management processes, activities, methodologies and policies adopted and carried out in an organization. Risk analysis involves the consideration of the source of risk, the consequence and likelihood to estimate the inherent or unprotected risk without controls in place. The ERM enhances organizational resiliency by improving decision-making, strengthening governance, and supporting a risk-intelligent culture. This economic approach to managing business risk is applicable if most of a firm's balance sheet can be marked to market.